Hey man, I have no idea what you said about me because I personally haven't seen it yet. All I know is a bunch of people are tweeting me, say that you are talking about me. I really hope that's not true because if it's true, oh man, we're gonna have to expose another snake. I doxed him. What are you gonna do about it? Attica has lost his mind. I'm telling you right now. What do you think is gonna happen? Possible not to laugh at that. This dude's do you touch kids? People need to know where this dude lives. I dox Destiny. Where is the big story? He is one of nature's most efficient killers. Killer Keemstar. Once his venom is injected into his victim, it can cause psychosis in minutes. <laughs> and in some cases, even death. Can't wait to report your death. <laughs> and he feeds on their pain. Today, we hunt the Cumulius Reptilius, the world's most deadly snake. Hi, Ethan Klein. Ethan uh, Klein is a liar! He's a liar! You liar! That's not the truth! Are you okay, bro? I'm actually worried about you, bro! I think maybe you're having like a mental breakdown. He's everywhere, man. He finds you anywhere. That's why we gotta be super safe in this discreet underground location. Harry Potter is just a movie, but I don't think I've ever actually met a real life Slytherin until Keemstar. Like, he's the wizard of being an asshole. Many of you may have seen my last video in which I defended myself against the accusations that I am the most evil man alive. And the explanation that we gave was adequate for everyone, except one man. The Camellius Reptilius, also known as Killer Keemstar. Troubler Nation, on your host, Killer Keemstar. I am here to tell you that Ethan Clyde is a liar! He's a liar! You liar! That's not the truth! That's just not true! And I'll tell you why it's not true. A liar! A liar! A liar! Like three years ago, there was this really popular game called Payday 2. The creators of Payday 2 basically came out and said, look, we're gonna do an H3H3 DLC pack. We're gonna sell it for $5. And all the money we make, we're gonna give to H3H3 for the lawsuit. And H3H3 lied to everyone, to everyone, to everyone. Now, like many things Keemstar says, this is 100% untrue. And let's please still appreciate the gravity of what he's saying. He's accusing me of a felony fraud, of the theft of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And Keemstar puts that out there really without any second thought and with full confidence, he says, you're a liar. And uh, Ethan Klein is a liar! <sighs> I want to bring you up to speed quickly with all of Keemstar's transgressions of the past before we move on to his illustrious future. He told Total Biscuit, who was dying of cancer, that he couldn't wait to report on his death. I want to be like, hmm, can't wait to report your death. <laughs> he falsely accused an elderly streamer of being a convicted pedophile. Ugh. I mean, how does he ever even live this one down? He wrongly accused the guy of being a pedophile, but God forbid if he has to stop playing a game to look into it. <laughs> and you know what his evidence was? Wait for it. He looked like the guy in the photo. Yeah, that's it. I, I'm not calling him. I'm not telling him my phone number. I don't want that guy to bother me no matter what. I don't want his money. I don't want his apology. Because you know what? Uh, I know who and what I am. And my real friends know who and what I am. Now, Keemstar likes to act like him and Tony are all good, but here's a clip of Tony talking about the incident one and a half years later, describing how this one mishap on Keemstar's drama alert uh, ended up with years of endless harassment for him. Have a listen. One time I had, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people threatening to kill my family, harassing my sister, my nephews. I mean... Me, I mean, you know, they were just, they, they took, hacked our, my RuneScape account. They hacked our YouTube channel. They did more crap than you can even possibly imagine, okay? All about how I'm a child molester and a, and a pedophile. 
Anyway, I, I sent a little uh, Twitter out. That I just said Keemstar, just so you know, your BS a year and a half ago still causes me trouble every day. And Keemstar, you know, having evolved from uh, his point of where he was before, people say he's changed, you know, he's a better man. This is how he reacts to Tony. I am not going to put up with you fucking blaming me for people trolling you anymore. Because I am not guilty of that. I'm guilty of that video being wrong and what I said about you. But I'm not guilty of you being trolled in 2017. If this happened once or twice, I just, I just let it go. But you have done this to me multiple times in the last six months. And I'm holding back every urge from saying just like, go fuck you, go fuck yourself. I'm holding that back. Oh, poor Keemstar. He's the victim of poor Tony's harassment. The unacceptable the way that Tony is harassing poor Keemstar, who is, he, he is just headed up to here with Tony. The guy he accused of being a pedophile publicly. Go fuck you. Go fuck yourself. I'm holding that back. Because you want to be friends, and I'm still willing to do that. You know, uh... <laughs> hey, that, you know, he is angry. <sighs> that clip with Tony was intense. I mean, the balls to tell this guy to fuck off. Keemstar has got a bottle of G Fuel somewhere in his house that's actually a Horcrux. How is G Fuel still sponsor this guy, by the way? G Fuel brought to you by false pedophilia accusations. God, chug it, G Fuel. Get it now at gfuel.com. Go fuck you. Now, after Content Cop, there was a period in time when Keemstar was laying low and being a good boy, and uh, everyone thought, wow, this guy's really changed. Yeah, he has changed for the worse. The much, much worse. Now guys, before I get back to the beginning of this video in which Keemstar accused me of a felony fraud, I'd like to bring you up to date with all of his achievements since Content Cop. So here, walk with me here. A museum of hate and destruction. I'm fucking white, I run this world. You're black, you're my slave, understand it. I would hang the f out of you. First time a gets a gun, he shoots his brother. I have never heard is so mad in my life. This dude is so embarrassed that he's black. Look at this reaction I'm getting. He's so angry because he knows he's a fucking second class citizen. Because the only reason why you want to fuck a white chick is because nobody wants to fuck a black chick. Just Destiny is a YouTuber who made the very regrettable decision of using underage girls in his thumbnails. Keemstar took that and ran with it, insinuating that he is a pedophile with zero evidence. Do you yeah. touch kids? Oh my god, really? But, but do you? Um, do you touch kids? After losing 3,000 subscribers for this interview, Keemstar declares war on Just Destiny. Dude, I got so much shit for that. Dude, I lost almost 3,000 subscribers. I'm going to war with this mother. Out of pure spite, Keemstar releases all of his public information on the internet. Here's an example of what my doc spin looks like. It has my name, birthday, home address, all of my phone numbers, my parents' phone numbers, and my parents' home address. This is released with the express purpose of harassing and often leads to swatting as well. Here he is admitting to doxing him. I doxed him. What are you going to do about it? What do you, I mean, I'm literally telling you right now, what do you think is going to happen to me? You said to Augie, this is going to be a big story that Keemstar docks Destiny. I dox Destiny. Where is the big story? Yeah, I dox people all the time. I'm, I run a news show. Like, it's literally part of the job. He brags about doxing many people because he runs a news show. Now, I don't know what kind of news show Keemstar's running, but I don't remember the last time Anderson Cooper uh, had to find out someone's mom's phone number and post it online. I need to know... Who so people gathering are. people's I need to know personal information where they live. I need to know where. I'm sorry, bitch, but I'm talking and you're talking when I talk. Shut up. Here's Keemstar doxing a YouTuber known as Smiles for YouTube on his live stream. His Skype is literally Smile for YouTube. Keep note of all this. That's his Skype right there. Giving out my house address, giving out all of my information. Because he this thinks- is, This is his phone number. The guy's from Canada. This is his wife's phone number right here. This is his wife's phone number right here. And I can totally see how that guy's wife's phone number is newsworthy and why he would need to release that publicly. <laughs> we need this dude's address. We need to drop his address. <laughs> you're a 
You can hear someone on the stream saying, Swatting is when you call the police and report a violent crime, hostage situation, or a terrorist attack to provoke an armed police response at someone else's address. This is our house last year. This is what swatting looks like. Doxing leads to swatting. Keemstar clearly knows this. He's fully aware of the consequence of saying this. We need this dude's address. We need to drop his address. And swatting sometimes leads to death, as we'll find out later in this video. People need to know where this dude lives. Now I'm gonna get swatted. Look at them all there. They're fucking everywhere. These cops are everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder who did this one. I'm sorry, I am recording for this situation because it happens a lot. I know, yeah, so, we know, we got it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I called you guys. I'm no, like, listen, it's fake, it's not true. Keemstar is shocked that people think he's responsible. Of course, he never called the police himself. That would be illegal. He just gleefully put the information on his stream, daring any of his followers to do it for him. Like, now I'm being accused of swatting people. All right, the, I, I, I can't even believe that this is a thing and I cannot believe that people actually believe it. His Skype is literally smile for YouTube. People actually believe it. This is his phone number. People actually believe it. This is his wife's phone number. People actually believe it. We need this dude's address. We need to drop his address. People actually believe it. People need to know where this dude lives. People actually believe it. Look at them all there. Is it really that hard to believe? Listen to Keemstar talk about him after leaking all of his private info on stream. This kid is a fucking loser in every sense of the word. I I've never dealt with such a loser in my life. Like, this guy has no friends. Zero friends. And I have trolled him so hard that his life is consumed by the thought of me. Now I'm being accused of swatting people. All right, the, I, I, I can't even believe that this is a thing and I cannot believe that people actually believe it. Keemstar claims that Smile for YouTube swatted him first. Smile for YouTube dude is a liar, all right? I never swatted him. He swatted me and he swatted Basher. And even if that's true, does it really justify leaking his wife's phone number? What did she have to do with it? This is his wife's phone number. And his home address endangering the lives of his children dealing with a fucking father fucking father 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 this is a man that's willing to endanger children over a petty internet beef i'm fast as fuck boy we need this dude's address still fast as fuck this is his wife's phone number dealing with a fucking father look at them all there i don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. Yeah, I dox people all the time. I'm, I run a new show. Means people need to know where this dude lives. Funny idea how fast I am. I think this guy has no friends. And I have trolled him so hard that his life is consumed by the thought of me. A man in Los Angeles is under arrest for a suspected prank that originated in the gaming community but turned deadly in real life in Kansas. John Blackstone with how it unfolded. Wichita police officers believe they were responding to a hostage situation when Andrew Fitch was shot dead after he appeared to be reaching for a weapon. It was all a mistake, started by this phony call to 911. I'm just pointing the gun at them, making sure they stay in the closet, my mom and my little brother. Okay, is there any way you can put the gun up? No. Police believe the call was actually made by 25-year-old Tyler Barris, 1,300 miles away in Los Angeles. Let's get right into the news. We reached out to him, and we asked him if we could get an interview with him, and we did. And this is what the person that made this fake police call said roll it this one really went under the radar but i find it really disturbing that keemstar the day after this murder happened was able to get this kid on his show fully monetized keemstar cashed in big time on this whole ordeal and i also if i recall correctly the interview brought to you by the swat murder was also sponsored by g fuel use code keem for 10 percent off of your life expectancy you swatted that address 
correct? Sure. Okay, right. so you swat at the address, you put in the, the fake hostage situation, correct? Yep. And then this guy gets killed. That's what happened, I guess. And you take any responsibility for what happened? I don't believe that I'm the only guilty party involved in this whole incident. You could point the finger at the cop who killed someone. You could point the finger at the guy who made the call. You could point the finger at the person who provided the address saying, Oh, look, this is where I live. Go ahead and swap me. So it's really, in my opinion, uh, debatable. Isn't it wonderful that Keemstar is giving this murder the opportunity to place blame on others totally uncontested? There's multiple people that caused this to happen, right? While still at large from the police. And can we appreciate the irony of Keemstar, of all people, to sit here and pretend to be outraged when he enables this kind of behavior all the time? What do you, what would you say to the family? We need this dude's address. I mean, this, this family doesn't have a, you know, these kids don't have a parent. Dealing with a fucking father, 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 father. You know, the mother has lost a son. This is his wife's phone number. This family has lost a member of their family because of your actions. People need to know where this dude lives. This kid is a fucking loser in every sense of the word. I've never dealt with such a loser in my life. Like, this guy has no friends. Zero friends. He went on drama alert and mocked the tweets of a suicidal YouTuber. That's it. That's all I need to say about that. Today's story is about Basher. He had a breakdown on Twitter, and quite frankly, he's suicidal. This is what he said on Twitter. I almost killed myself today on the way home. I'm not sure why I can't ever just go through with it. Constant highs, lows. I can't take this anymore. By itself, this clip is bad enough. But to understand where our story is going, you need to understand Keemstar's position on mental illness in general. We don't believe in depression in this household. We believe if you're sad, work harder. If you claim that you have mental health issues, people automatically support you. They automatically feel bad for you. They automatically give you attention. Do you get it? that a lot of this is bullshit. That depression and mental health issues is the biggest shield in the fucking world. FYI, everybody gets depressed, but only the weak let it define them. And you are weak. If you wanna be left alone, here's a block. Drug companies invent all of these mental illnesses so they could sell drugs to morons. Social anxiety is 100% a fake invented illness so they can sell you drugs and make millions. Stop being weak. Society is literally going to die if you keep this bullshit up. Real talk. If you suffer from panic attacks and you're old enough to drink, the best way to stop a panic attack real quick is to have a sip of beer. You only need like three sips. Brought to you by Dr. Daniel Keemstar. Sponsored by G Fuel. Well, sadly, we are learning new details about the death of popular YouTuber Etika. The medical examiner's office says the 29-year-old drowned in the East River by suicide. Etika, whose real name is Desmond Amofa, was found Monday near the South Street Seaport. The NYPD says some of his things were located along the Manhattan Bridge two days earlier. Fans became worried about the YouTuber last week when he posted an eight-minute video saying it's been a nice life. Let's go right into the news! Attica has lost his mind, like the third time. Attica is a YouTuber that unfortunately took his own life. It shook a lot of us to the core and, and caused a lot of introspection in the YouTube community. I believe he suffered from bipolar disorder and he was known for going through extreme manic states and making a spectacle on YouTube. And Keemstar, of course, was very quick to capitalize on these spectacles. He started tweeting out crazy things yesterday. Once again, 
for the final time, I am God. And so are you. Oh my God. Wait, I'm God. I'm God. He's God. We're all God. When you're bipolar and you're in a manic state, you have to understand that you can become very detached from reality. And what this person needs is, is certainly professional help and tenderness and not being fed into their mania. You could see, for example, just how worried about him Keemstar is. Attica has lost his mind. Attica has lost his mind. I mean, don't be so excited about it, dude. It's kind of a bummer. I doubt that him and his fans and his family are feeling that happy about it. At one point, he was arrested by the police and Keemstar noted that he couldn't help but laugh at it. Somebody, and we don't know who, called the police on him. The police showed up to his apartment, and this is the video he posted on Twitter. Roll it. Yeah, I think somebody's trying to hurt me. I don't know. It's people online. People online are trying to hurt me. Online? online. People online. Don't let them hurt me, okay? Because they keep calling the cops on me. The people online that are calling, they hate me for some reason. I don't know why they hate me, though. All I do, I make porno, though. I make I make a lot of p so I, I'm really rich, I have a lot of money, I make a lot of p So that's probably why. <laughs> it's like impossible not to laugh at that. During a previous Manic episode, Keemstar had tweeted out the address, the location of the mental hospital he was being stayed at. You're in a manic state. The last thing you need is being fed more energy and excitement and mania. Be doxing someone is bad enough, but a dude in a manic state having a breakdown to dox his mental institute is just, I found myself staring at this tweet in complete disbelief. The day before Keemstar doxed his mental hospital, he tweeted out, Etika fans are tweeting at me saying I shouldn't be streaming Red Dead at a time like this. He's not my friend. I barely speak to him. I'm worried, but there's nothing I can do. And it's Red Dead too. Sorry, but I'm streaming it no matter what. Three days later, Keemstar is tagging Etika and putting as much tension on him as possible. Retweet if you want an interview with Etika. And then people start giving him shit in the comments. Leave him alone. Give him some time to rest. Suck a dick. I run a news channel. I'm going to get my viewers the news. I don't give a fuck about your fake social justice warrior emotions on Twitter for attention. This really shows how Keemstar views Etika more as a commodity than a person. Keemstar's channel performance is way more important than the well-being of Etika. During one of his manic states, the police broke into his apartment. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm really scared. I'm really, really scared. I'm really, really scared right now. Look, can you see me? Okay. Doesn't. Okay. Glad your hands are okay? Okay. Okay. Here. Here. Look, look, look. Okay. Turn around. Turn around, buddy. Okay. Turn around. Ow. Ah. 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 And released him a couple hours later. Now, Keemstar was quick to scoop him up in his vulnerable state, the manic state he was in, and immediately put him on his show. So there you have it. That was the end of that. They took Etika to the mental hospital. But only a few hours later, he was released. I jumped in his DMs and set up this interview. And let me just tell you, things got crazy, crazy. You should also notice the nice little meme he introduces him with that shows really truly how little he cares about Etika. Crazy. That's what's going on. It's me, the Antichrist. I've come to purge the planet of all human life. I will be dropping nuclear missiles very, very soon on every single human being. Death means nothing. Why are you all so scared of death for? It means absolutely zero in the interim. Why do you think I made Trump president? We're about to get some fireworks real soon. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Etika is on the line here. Now, Etika, when you say death means nothing, uh, are you uh, basically saying that life is a simulation? Is that what you're getting to? Yeah, life is a video game. We're all in a video game, and I'm the one that's putting the pieces together. Everything that you've done in your life, Keemstar, was all leading up to this moment, to where you can broadcast the start of the beginning of the rise of the known Antichrist. I am the Antichrist. I am the one who brings death to all. Etika is clearly having delusions of grandeur and at the peak of a manic state. Keemstar has no concern for stopping this interview and getting him help. He's only interested in the spectacle 
of Attica. Attica has lost his mind! Of feeding into his delusions and broadcasting it to millions of people. What, what, what is your purpose? What is the overall purpose Ooh. of the Antichrist? Stop repeating me the fucking... I said to purge all life. This is the absolute worst thing he could do for Etika. Loading him up with more intention and feeding into his manic state. He knew he would get lots of views, and he did, with great cost to Etika. Scariest thing about thinking that the world is a simulation and it's predestined and all that is then there's no reason yeah. to live. Why not? Why do you fear death? Keemstar's greatest moment comes when he asks Etika in a manic state, why doesn't he just jump off a cliff? If you really think about it, then why live? Just yeah. jump off a cliff. Just yeah. jump off a cliff. If, if it's just a simulation, who cares? Of course, hypothetical, but it is quite a coincidence when you consider that only 51 days later, that very same YouTuber jumped off a bridge to his death. A popular YouTube personality and gamer from Brooklyn is missing tonight, and a video posted before he disappeared has family and friends worried. That's 29-year-old Desmond Amofa, also known as Etika Online. He published an eight-minute video yesterday apologizing to those he feels he's let down. Now, nobody's been able to reach him since. And, of course, who was there to collect the revenue? Oh, scare into the news! We have a bunch of news for you today, but first, Etika has gone missing. Nobody can find him. And who was there to tweet out that he thought he was lying, that he was weak, that he didn't believe him? There is a possibility that this is a publicity stunt. The thing that pisses me off is that Etika now 100% knows the internet is worried about him. And 13 hours later, he's not notifying his fans that he's okay. Maybe it's because he did off himself, but I doubt it. Sounds like a dude that really cares about his friend. How about this tweet from only a couple months earlier? Dear Etika, normally I would say stop going crazy, but there's no news going on. So go full July 15th, baby. I've got kids to feed. Once Etika's body is found by the NYPD, he suddenly turns to homie, and the rewriting of history quickly begins to cover his tracks. Scumbags are trying to pin my friend's death on me. I can't even mourn my homie. Yes, I'm sure Keemstar cared deeply for Etika. Etika has lost his mind! Friends they were. Idubs had a great segment in Content Cop about how Keemstar considers people his quote, friends. I'll let him tell it. It wouldn't surprise me if Keemstar thought him and I were friends. You know, just because I follow him back on Twitter, he's probably thinking, uh, Idubs referred to me as Buddy in the DMs. He must, he must be my friend. So if he ever makes a video on me, I'm gonna say, we were friends, we were supposed to be friends. We were never friends, cunt. People don't understand and they don't ask me questions. They just point the finger and say, you're to blame. And there's so much more that happened privately that just you guys don't understand and I just wanna mourn my friend. So please stop making me defend myself. Um, some people are pulling up a tweet from October of 2018 and where I said, you know, uh, I've only talked to Etika a few times, we're not really friends, and that was true. That was the truth, like, at that time. We only became close and, you know, had conversations, um, you know, in length, privately, about r really life in general, and, and YouTube and Twitter and all that stuff. Only kind of around the time that we did the interview. Interview, 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 interview. I never did show you guys the end of that interview with his good friend Etika, with his homie. I recorded an interview with Etika. He started yelling and rage quit. He got mad because I called him out for being weak. Keemstar loves to call people suffering from mental illness weak. But let's go back and see how that interview actually ended with his good friend Etika. I've been on this platform and I've tried my best to not step on any toes. I've always tried my best to consider other people. I don't want to hurt anybody. I never wanted to, I always, I always shied away from whenever people would make fun of people. And it, it just felt bad. It's like, why would you tear that person down? Be nice to people. I know I always thought I was weird because why would I never want to jump to hurting someone? I always just wanted to make content and have fun. 
And I yeah, realize I mean, now, you can, oh, you, it's can, because... you can crack jokes about people and still have fun. It's not being mean. Yeah, but you're mean about it. You know, you're mean about it. You're uh, mean I mean, about it. Sometimes it, it, you're heartless. Sometimes I am mean about it, but it's still funny. Yes, but that's it's still it. funny. That's it's it. still funny. It is funny, though. Look, I do dark humor, and I don't kill people like you do sometimes. You kill that old man by calling him a pedophile. I've never done oh, anything get out of here. Get out of here. That's ridiculous. Listen, shut up. We shut got up. A story. I'm shut not going to shut up. Been... I, I'm not going to shut up. We got a story wrong Look, for we... about 45 minutes. The video was taken down. I offered the guy 20 grand I know on the, the spot. I, shut up. I, I know the, the situation. Guy, no, I'm I want not you. shutting yeah. up. I'm and then you apologize. Up. You went on the I'm stream. Not and you up. told the audience to go I did everything I could to make it right with that dude. I'm not shutting up. I'm not shutting it up. You just said something that was so much bullshit. Yeah, you but you still called a pedophile with no information, you mother asshole. Because I was yeah, fed wrong yeah, yeah. information, you like, and you, you know right? that. Sometimes it's because still, I was sometimes fed it's wrong information. In sometimes it sucks looking in the mirror, doesn't it? Doesn't it hurt, Team Star? It hurts when you feel the same thing that you've Attica, done to other Attica, people. Attica, doesn't I it hurt? in the mirror every 20 minutes Man, after I'm, it happened. Really 20 fucking, minutes after it happened. When weakling, did you look into the weakling, mirror? weakling, record this and put it on drama alert at 12 tonight. I'm recording it right now. I'm recording it right now. Oh my god, what a f that job. <laughs> People don't understand and they don't ask me questions. Attica has lost his mind, like the third time. They just point the finger and say, you are to blame. Possible not to laugh at that. And there's so much more that happened privately. That yeah. Just jump off a cliff. If, if it's just a simulation, who cares? Uh, just you guys don't understand. Was this a publicity stunt? And I just want to mourn my friend. So please stop making me defend myself. We're all God. We only became close and, you know, had conversations. What a f that job. <laughs> um you know, in length, privately, about r really life in general. Crazy. And, and YouTube and Twitter and all that stuff. Only kind of around the time that we did the interview. Um, before then, before the interview, and after. FusiTube is another YouTuber who is a frequent target of Keemstars. He also suffered a manic break, and here he is talking directly to Keemstar. Hey, I'm just telling you as a man at 28 years old what I feel. You made me want to commit suicide last year. I wanted to kill myself because of all the attention you gave me. I rewatched videos going viral after the attention you're giving me now of you saying, Fousey is the biggest piece of shit egotistical asshole on this earth. I have bipolar and depression. That what you put into my head made me want to kill myself! But ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you that Ethan Clyde is a liar. He's a liar. You liar. That's not the truth. You didn't spend $15,000 of your own money. And in the video he uploaded yesterday, again, he said, I spent my own money on this lot. That's just not true. And I'll tell you why it's not true. Because like three years ago, there was this really popular game called Payday 2. And the creators of Payday 2 basically came out and said, look, we're gonna do an H3H3 DLC pack. We're gonna sell it for $5 and all the money we make, we're gonna give to H3H3 for the lawsuit. The lawsuit. The lawsuit. He's a liar. He's a liar. You liar. That's not the truth. Here we are back at the beginning of our video, where Keemstar was just accusing me of a felony fraud. But ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you that Ethan Clyde is a liar! If what he claims were true, not only would I be a terrible person, I'd also be in legal trouble with both Starbreeze, the game's producer, and I'm sure the federal government. I pride myself on getting you the facts. But surely with such incredible claims, a newsman like Keemstar would have incredible evidence to back it up. I pride myself on getting this right. Otherwise it would just be outright slander. Let's see what he's got. 
A Payday 2's new H3H3 themed DLC sells for $4.99, which the developer Overkill will receive 0% of the cut. It's a matter of protecting IP. And his proof is get this one Kutaku article that says, quote, it's a matter of IP. Yes, that's his whole quote. He's gonna go out to a million people and say, Ethan Klein is a liar and guilty of felony fraud because Kotaku said it's a matter of IP. It's a matter of protecting IP, blah, 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 blah. They're giving them the money for the lawsuit. Bro, blah, 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 you're a news guy. You don't blah, blah, blah. You blah, blah, blah the whole article. Maybe you didn't blah, 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 blah article, you'd actually know that what you're saying is bullshit. G Fuel apparently blah 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 your whole history when they decided to sponsor you. Blah 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 blah. They're giving them the money for the lawsuit. Yes. Next time you watch Keepstar, remember what his research entails. Alright! It's the blah 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 blah. Now I'm assuming Keemstar wouldn't just make something like this up. I pride myself on getting you the facts. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And let's call someone who would actually know. So I called Almir Listo, the global brand director for Starbreeze Studios. They made the game, and he brokered the deal for us. Have you spoken to Keemstar? No. Okay. I'm not spoken to Keemstar. Oh, he didn't ask you. Well, did I commit fraud? Was that money meant for us? It was 100% meant for you and Hila, yeah. So I didn't commit fraud? <laughs> no. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because he was saying that I could, like stole hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you're saying that's not true, and you're the guy that that set up the deal and did everything. So if anyone would know, it would be you, right? Not Keemstar. It would be me. Yeah, yeah it would be you. Okay, fantastic. Well, I feel much better. I feel like the FBI will be relieved to know that, and um, no fraud. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, thanks, man. Take care, dude. Take this is a big fuck up. This is a serious big fuck up to the point where I just feel ashamed. I feel ashamed. I can't believe that we would fuck up like this. We reported a story that this Massachusetts man, John Phillips, had sex with a teen that he married in an online game in RudeScape back in 2011, okay? And then he got out of jail and that he's streaming on Twitch again. Now, the problem with this is that that's not John. That's a gentleman named Tony. And when we reported this video, a bunch of you went over and harassed this guy. Called him names, pedo, sex offender, you name it. This guy didn't do anything. He didn't do anything wrong. And because of me, he was harassed. I pride myself on getting you the facts. Like, I pride myself on getting this right. I don't ever want to f*** up like this again. I don't ever want to fail you like this again. I pride myself on being right. And I was not right this time. And Tony, if you're watching, we're going to make this right with you. No matter what we have to do. I am not going to put up with you fucking blaming me for people trolling you anymore. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. And I'm holding back every urge from saying just like, go fuck you, go fuck yourself. I'm holding that back. Any idea how fast I am? Go get an attorney and sue I'm fast as fuck, boy! Every single day I get a death threat in, uh, uh, on the email I'm, because I'm a pedophile. Go, go fuck, fuck you. Go, go fuck, fuck yourself. yourself. Well, I mean, you know, whose fault do you think that is? Come on. The reason I showed you this is because he hasn't changed. He never changed. It only took him one year to turn on Tony. This is a man that purports to do the news, but goes out and calls a man a pedophile based on a picture or to accuse someone of a felony fraud with absolutely no evidence. I don't kill people like you do sometimes. You kill that old man by calling him a A hateful, spiteful person that can't differentiate between personal vendetta and news. He's pissed off, man. This guy's mad at the world. He wields his audience like a weapon, striking at anyone that dares to criticize him. We need this dude's address. We need to drop his address. And if the facts don't suit his mission, then he will alter them manipulate them, and create them. Do you yeah. touch kids? Until the harassment becomes so unbearable, you simply surrender.
Team Star, I apologize, and I won't be sending you any more tweets. And uh, you know, uh, I, no matter what, I'll do my very best to make sure that your name never comes out of my mouth. Now, on my show, when people bring you up, I, I, I'm just going to tell them that, hey, I think you're a nice guy, and I don't want no trouble. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. Just to give you an idea of how Keemstar torments and harasses people on his enemy list, let me show you some of the DMs he sent me over the years. Now, these are cold DMs. I've already unfollowed him, and he is sending me these DMs unsolicited out of the cold blue for the express uh, purpose of harassing me, so I really don't feel bad sharing these tweets at all. Currently working on an H3H3 lying salty man-child video. Have a few questions. Have you ever flagged down another YouTuber creator's video? I don't answer and he uh, persists. Can I get an answer here? I'm trying to meet your request of giving nonstop defense because your baby ass can't defend yourself. Keemstar will make insane accusations, groundless accusations, and then he expects you to defend yourself. In fact, he likes it if you'll come on your, his show and defend himself. That's how his operation works. And so he goes, oh, well, he didn't say anything in his defense, so he must be guilty. Have you ever lied to anyone on YouTube? What are you, the fucking FBI? I don't have to answer shit, you dumbass. Bro, I am honestly starting to think you are having mental issues. Want B to grab a number for you to call from Erica Costella? He's making a reference to some like Team 10 drama. It's like, bro, this is the next day. This is the night and then the next day in the morning. He goes, have you ever lied about anyone on YouTube? And then two days later, can I get a sorry yet or do I need to keep defending myself? He's like an abusive spouse punching his, his girlfriend in the face. Do I need to keep defending myself or are you gonna apologize? We made a video about CSGO Lottery about how these two dudes, T. Martin Pro Syndicate, were pretending to gamble on a CSGO Lottery site that they owned. It was crooked as hell and we made a video about it. So Keemstar DMs me out of the cold blue and he says, I know about the CSGO gambling investment for a while now. People are talking. I said, are you accusing me of being invested in CSGO gambling? He goes, me? No. Others may be though. I go, oh, interesting. I say, did you invest? He said, yeah, I made a ton of money too. Hmm. He goes on to say, Kay, did you invest under someone else's name? Which I guess it leads me to believe he's like, well, I didn't find any evidence of you investing? Did you happen to break the law under someone else's name I could tell you, I could uh, report on? And there's so many other examples I could frankly make an entire new video about it. He tweeted out an anonymous letter about how I hired a PR firm to remove videos critical of me for being anti-Semitic. There has been an anonymous letter posted to the internet saying that H3H3, Ethan Klein, was going to try to create a scenario that the hate against him was anti-Semitism. He retweeted people saying that I was faking our $100,000 giveaway. And this video, which is honestly just so gold, I think you should just watch it. Ethan Klein, H3H3, trying to shut down Comic-Con. Now recently, there has been an outbreak of coronavirus in Seattle, Washington. And the middle of March, Comic-Con is gonna be in Seattle, Washington, and apparently 100,000 people are gonna show up from around the country, around the world, really. And Ethan Klein, H3H3, I mean, he's trying to get it shut down. He's tagging the governor. He's tagging the politicians. He's demanding that Comic-Con get shut down for the safety of the human race. Now I'm looking at these tweets and I'm like, bro, this ain't something ain't right. Something had to have happened behind the scenes between H3H3 H3 and Comic-Con. There had to be some bad blood. Maybe he was planning on going. They weren't gonna pay him the right amount. Something happened behind the scenes that he's trying to get Comic-Con shut down. Something ain't right. I am but one man. Probably not even the most hated man in Keemstar's life. And you've seen the length he's gone to harass me, to slander me, uh, to rewrite history in every conceivable way to make me look evil. And frankly, it has worked on a lot of people. I have a wonderful support system, a wife that loves me, a stable financial system. I'm fortunate and blessed in every conceivable way. And this kind of targeted harassment from Keemstar actually does take a toll on me mentally. And when I'm already having a hard time, Keemstar is sure to drill in and give me even a worse time as possible. Are you okay, bro? I'm actually worried about you, bro. I think maybe you're having like a mental breakdown. Now what happens when someone who has a less stable situation than me endures this targeted and sustained harassment from Keemstar? What happens to them? You know, the streamer that Keemstar accused falsely of being a pedophile had a beautiful way 
of putting into words what this really this whole video is driving at. You know, in, in life, um, we're, we're responsible for our own actions. And, you know, we should be a little bit more careful about what we say and do. Because, you know, a actions have consequences and uh, they hurt people. It's really that simple. I mean, you know, and they destroy lives. You know, they always say loose lips, lips sink ships, you know. Bottom line is you start a rumor and, you know, one person tells two and two tell four and two tell eight. And the next thing you know, the whole damn world is believing a bunch of bullshit that's not even true. And, uh, you know, that's that's exactly what's happened in this case. And look, hey, you know, I, I'm 64. Uh, I'm not uh, real internet savvy. I'm not into all this, but I'll tell you one thing I'm not used to. I'm not used to being called a pedophile. Now, you know, if, if you accuse me of being bald and fat and ugly, I'll agree with you, okay? Hey, but uh, you know, I'm no pedophile, and, that, and that's a terrible thing to say about somebody, period. Anyway, I, I sent a little you know, Twitter out. And I, I just said Keemstar, just so you know, your BS a year and a half ago still causes me trouble every day, and it does. Go, go fuck, fuck you. you. Go, go fuck, fuck yourself. yourself. Yeah.